to our service today at the First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Judy Slater. Our musician today is Matt Demas, and our liturgist today is Cassie Semler, our seminary intern. There is a bulletin online if you would like to follow along in the unison and responsive readings. Um, and I do want to say that we are worshiping in the sanctuary at 11 o'clock on Sundays for those who feel comfortable coming. But we will continue our online services because we want everyone to be able to participate in worship and stay safe. So let us join together in the call to worship found in the bulletin. We give you thanks, O Lord, for you are good. Your steadfast love endures forever. We have cried to you in times of trouble. You delivered us from our distress. We thank you, O Lord, for your wonderful works surround us. You know our needs before we ask. We praise you. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Holy God, we rejoice in the gift of this day and give thanks for the gift of your love. Tell us what you want us to hear. Show us what you want us to do to be your people and give us the courage to follow you. Amen. As we gather for worship today, we remember that God is the creator and we are the created. That God's ways are greater than our ways. God's thoughts are greater than our thoughts. Therefore, we humble ourselves before God with the prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess the weakness of our faith, the stress of all we are expected to do and be. The concerns of each day leave us often weary and discouraged. You have given us visions of what can be through your love. Help us to be changed and renewed by that love so that we can go beyond our own weaknesses and come closer to fullness of life. Forgive us, O oh God, our unwillingness to surrender our lives to you. Amen. It is God's desire that we be reconciled, reconciled to God, to each other, and even to ourselves. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are loved, we are accepted, and we are forgiven. Testament come from Isaiah 43 verses 1 through 3 but now this is what the Lord says he who created you Jacob he who formed you Israel do not fear for I have redeemed you I have summoned you by name you are mine when you pass through the waters I will be with you and when you pass through the rivers they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. 
and our reading this week is from Matthew 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. Are they they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them? Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, which today is arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the word of the Lord. I read a story this past week on a site called Preaching Platform about a man who had this unreasonable fear about what was under his bed. And he went to talk to a psychologist about it, and the psychologist said, yes, I can help you with this fear, but it'll take several sessions, and it's a bit costly. So the man went, said okay, and he left, and he never went back to the psychologist. The psychologist saw him out in the street and said to him, whatever happened, you never came back. And he said, well, I got some free advice that worked. And the psychologist said, oh, what advice did you get? The man said, I ran into a friend who told me, just cut off the legs of your bed and the fear will go away. A story to remind us that many of our fears are unfounded and we can have some unreasonable fears in our lives. Some of those date back to things that have happened to us in the past, but not all of our fears are unfounded and not all of them are this easily resolved. We have some very real concerns in our lives, don't we? We have worries about our health. There's some real reason for some of us to have worries about our health. Another common fear is financial security. You know, we know that if something major happens to our car, to our house, or to our job, that we might be in trouble. We have job insecurity, right? We worry about what happens to our job. What will we do then? We might have some fears and insecurities about relationships or some real worries about loved ones. And this week, of course, we have a fear for our country. And there are people on both sides of this election who are convinced that if the other candidate wins, it will be the end of our democracy. We are videotaping this on Friday, so we don't know the outcome of the election yet um, on our, in our service right here. But there are people on both sides very concerned, very worried, and the stress of waiting is getting to everyone. Not only do we have the stress of the pandemic now, we have the stress of this election. You know, they say worry doesn't really help anything and it can make things worse. Worrying does not add a single year to our lives, but it can cause us 
problems, mental health issues of depression, issues of suppressing our immune system because of the worry and stress, affects our, our, the way our body fights off illness. They say that stress, worry, can cause cardiovascular issues in us. When, I, when I'm stressed and worried, I realize I don't breathe as deeply. And that causes some problems in us as well, in how we digest our food and how we relax. In the end, when we think about it, worry, stress, anxiety, rob us of the joy of life. It is a thief robbing us of the joy of life. We miss the blessings of the day when we are living with stress and worry and anxiety. Most of the things I've worried about over the years never came to pass. And the major things that happened to me, the major problems were things that I hadn't even anticipated. So worrying about those other things was useless in the end. And what I found out is that the major things that happened that I couldn't anticipate, God took care of me at the time. God was there helping me through it all. Like when I hurt my leg last year out in the church yard, something I could not have anticipated. But God put Heather there that night. She usually wasn't there that late, but put Heather there that night who knew exactly what to do to stop the bleeding and knew exactly to call an ambulance and not to wait. Because at that point I was on blood thinners and it could have been a really difficult situation. God had already provided Heather for me, knowing that I was going to do something as stupid as tripping over a cement block. Most of the things that have happened in my life, and we talked about this at Bible study Wednesday night, the major things that happen that we worry about are the times when God surrounds us most powerfully with help and with love. So why are we worrying so much? Well, fear is a human emotion given to us in order to warn us of danger, right? I mean, we have, a, we have that feeling of fear to warn us that maybe something is unsafe. We cannot help the fears that we have. We have fears that come prop, prop up in us that have come from things that have happened to us earlier in life. And the fears are a natural trigger in us. But we can't control those fears when they come up. We can't control our thoughts when they come up, the fears, the anxiety, the worry, but we can control what we do with them when they do crop up. Many of our fears are come from insecurities from earlier in our lives. And the Bible says, however, we are not to live with a spirit of fear. We are not to live in fear. Jesus tells that us that if God cares about feeding the birds and arraying the flowers of the field, God will surely take care of us. So dealing with fear, worry, anxiety, stress is really something like a balancing act, isn't it? At times, it's, it gets to the point where we do need medication for that, but we can also do some other things if, that, if it's not that severe. Fear, worry, anxiety, stress. First of all, we can recognize the fear and the stress that it is causing us. We can start to recognize what our body feels like when we're under stress or we're feeling fear or we're living in worry. We can recognize that and we can acknowledge that we are feeling stressed, 
that we are feeling worried, that we have anxiety, that we're afraid. Acknowledging the situation. And then ask, is there something I can do about this? Is there something I can do about the stress, the worry? And if there is not, then we need to turn it over to God. If there is something we can do, then that's the point where maybe God is nudging us to do it. And so once we've done all that we know how to do for the situation, then we need to let it go, to pray about it instead of worrying. And then let God handle it. Have faith in God, for God is better able to handle it than we are anyway. Some things we can do during these stressful times, however, is to pray and read scripture. John mentioned in our Wednesday Bible study that oftentimes if he's feeling stressful or worried or anxious, he'll just open the Bible. And he said it always seems to work out that there is some words of comfort or encouragement for him when he does that. We can learn to live one day at a time and not to worry about the future. God is in the present with us. And to enjoy God's presence, we need to be present today and enjoy the day that God has given us. Taking life one day at a time. We can do some physical activity, walking, um, gardening, our gardeners have been out here all summer. That's the way they've handled this pandemic. We can rake leaves. If you need any leaves to rake, we've got some in the church yard to help you out. You can take a bike ride. Some sort of physical activity they tell us is good to relieve the stress and worry of the time. To do something positive you enjoy, some hobby or some craft or just reading for pleasure. I spend time with my grandchildren and I can assure you if I'm running after a three-year-old or a one, almost one-year-old, I'm really not thinking of the rest of the things going on in my life or in my world. They keep me pretty occupied at the moment. And another suggestion I heard that I love Make sure you have at least one belly laugh a day. Find pleasure in something. Find some uh, amusement in something that you can laugh and enjoy life to lighten that stress that we're feeling. We have a lot of stress and concerns. We have stress and concerns right now about our nation and our divided nation. We have stress and concerns about the pandemic as cases continue to rise. And as we start now to hear of more cases maybe closer to home, the stress and anxiety of this. We, we live with this right now, maybe more than most times because of all that is going on. And we can't control that. We cannot control what is happening in our nation right now. We did our part and we voted, but we can't control it from here. We can't control the pandemic. We can keep ourselves safe as possible, but we can't control the pandemic out there. We can do what we can for racism, but we can't control the rest of what is happening out there. And we live with the stress of not being able to control that. And what we're invited to do is to do what we can and then turn the rest over to God in prayer. And I think there are a few other things that will help in this time of stress because it does feel out of control for us is to do a few things we can control. We can make sure that we continue to do positive things in life. Positive things in our family, positive things in our neighborhood, our community, our church. 
doing what is good and what is right and what is just as we continue to do our small part to work for the good it means something we can pray and trust that God is still in control and that God will take care of us. Worry won't change anything, but prayer will. So every time worry seeps up on you, pause and offer it in prayer. Whether it is a prayer for generally the things that are going on in the world, whether it's a prayer for your health, your finances, your loved ones, your relationships, whatever your fears and worries and anxieties and stresses are at the moment, offer them in prayer because prayer does make a difference. So let's not live in fear. Let's not have a spirit of fear and anxiety and stress. Let us not let that rob us of the joy of life. God has given us this day. May we enjoy the blessings and the presence of God's love in this day, here and now, trusting that God is taking care of the rest. Let us pray. God, we do ask for your help in letting go of our fears, of our anxieties, of our worries, of our stress, because this is a very real problem for us right now with all that is going on in the world and all that is going on in our lives. So we look to you for help. Help us to let go and let you be in charge. Help us to find comfort in the fact that you feed the birds in the air. You array the flowers in beautiful, beautiful array and that you will take care of us as well. In Jesus name. Amen. Oh
join me in the affirmation of faith, a statement of what we believe. And this is found in the bulletin and comes from St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. Not so much to be understood as to understand. Not so much to be loved, but to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Let us join together in prayer. God of all the living, in the resurrection of Christ Jesus, you have given us the promise of life, which death itself cannot destroy. In the strength of this unshakable promise, give us a new heart to live even now as your new creation. With confidence in your love and presence, we come to you with our concerns. God, we bring to you our concerns about our nation. Please heal us and help us and unite us. We come to you with concerns about the pandemic and ask that you will help end this. And we pray for all who are suffering because of it. Please heal those who are sick. We ask for your help and encouragement for those whose lives have been turned upside down by the hurricanes and wildfires. Please help them rebuild and let them know that you are there. Lead us away from the sin of racism to a true humanity realized for all. Hear our prayers for our church. Hear our prayers for all the churches during this time. We lift up to you our church family. We lift up to you our loved ones. And we pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn today is Now Thank We All Our God.
to lead you. May God go behind you to protect you. May God go beneath you to support you. May God go beside you as your friend. Do not be afraid. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And may the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.